book show. So fellow Ambazonians, a lot of you will be wondering what is the, the connection between the Ambazonian Liberation War and uh, NS Wani. It's very important that you understand this connection and the perception of uh, what is going on and the crossroad where we find ourselves so that we can better navigate our way through this uh, liberation struggle. I'm going to get you into some presentation using video materials as well as uh, pictures to highlight what I'm trying to, to bring to you today. Our country is going to be facing a period of election of La Republic to Cameroon in March. The dictator, the oldest president in the world, Paul Bia, have declared that they, there will be election in our territory organized by a foreign state, Cameroon. I'm going to present to you this uh, issue con concerning the anniversary of the Ambazonian uprising and the death of Umnyobe, who took place, which all took place on the 15th of January. Ours, of course, took place on the 15th of January in 2006, uh, 2017. That of uh, NS Wani, he was killed in uh, uh, 1972 in uh, Bafusam. So there is big connection that you very you need to to open your eyes so that you can know these things. And uh, if you are watching me in Ambazonia, you are one of the one percent most smartest people, <laughs> as we say. Only smart people follow this platform, and only smart people follow Capo Daniel. So I want to congratulate you if you are watching me in Ground Zero and wherever you are, that you are part of that uh, group of my country people. I'm going to be creating a new section in my YouTube channel where we are going to have membership, where I'm going to have some exclusive and also more interactive conversation because I realize that there are a lot of Ambazonians who wants to give me advice. A lot of Ambazonians who wants to put in, have an input in what I do, and um, some of them are not members of the Egg of Sea uh, community and the Egg of Sea organization across the globe and in Ground Zero. So they can have a chance through that interactive platform. And if you also want to have my number, this is my number. Let me put my hand so that you can see it clearly. This is my number. You can uh, have it on WhatsApp to contact me and communicate with me uh, directly. So, ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, we are going to go straight into this uh, program and we'll take it systematically so that everybody will understand exactly what we are talking about. So, it has been six years ago since the Ambazonian uprising took place and it has been a lot of uh, decades ago since Comrade um, uh, Ernest Wani was uh, assassinated in an execution by La Republic to Cameroon current regime. I'm going to expose that to you and what you should learn and what you should know and the connection you must make between the fight for independence of Cameroon and the fight for independence of Ambazonia, especially as we are in the crossroad of a crucial uh, opportunity for Ambazonia to have a negotiated settlement of uh, this uh, our quest for independence. So first, I'll take you back where it all began. You remember the, the whole Ambazonian rising started up on the 15th of January where a meeting or dialogue between the Republic of Cameroon representative who was represented by by uh, Paul Gogomo, the chairman of the Abhor Committee representing the Cameroon government, had a meeting with the various leaders of trade unions of Ambazonia after a series of protests by the lawyers as well as the, the teachers, as well as those who were selling in the market, and many other people in Ambazonia who were boiling under the pressure of the policy of assimilation, discrimination, and the outright recolonization of our territory. This thing has been going on for over 60 years, and finally our people had enough, and the Cameroon government was forced to come to the dialogue table by the consortium and the various leaders of those at, at that day. They were asking for one thing, which was very, very clear. I want to put it up so that our people can see. The teachers and the lawyers were asking for two things, basically. I'll read it for you to, to, to understand. They said the Anglophone should stand up to save the Anglophone, the Anglo-Saxon English system of education from complete eradication. Only two state federation or outright independence can save the common law and Anglophones. So this protest was based on two demands. 
two state federation and outright or outright independence to solve the problem of the teachers, the lawyers, and all the anglophones. So this was a clear demand that was being made. And the Cameroon government came into dialogue, appointed an Ambazonian, Paul Gogomo, to lead the negotiation on behalf of Cameroon. At the end of that negotiation, which was six years ago, in 15 January, Paul Gogomo decided to declare that the Ambazonians' civil society were all extremists. And follow his, following his declaration that fateful day, the Cameroon Minister of Territorial Administration decided to ban the consortium as well as the SCNC, thereby banning the nationalism of Ambazonia. Then the Ambazonia started to rise up now, abandoning the demand for federalism, and now we're demanding outright independence. I'm going to take you through this sequence before I take you to the issue of uh, Comrade N.S. Wani of La Republic to Cameroon. So I'm going to share with you some of those vi videos of the Ambazonian uprising when our people were protesting across our national, national territory. The students who were protesting and the lawyers who were protesting were met with huge Cameroon military presence that paralyzed them. So these are some of the footages from 2016 that shows the reaction of the Cameroon government for legitimate demands and protests from the students, the lawyers, and the civil society of Amber. So I want to share with you all these moments to build you up not to lose sight of history and where we can go and where we are heading to. I'll use this opportunity to also adjust the date. Now, and a student, the boys are master. Okay. You take a look at the one. Visualize him carefully. The agent of assimilation. Agent of assimilation. I'm telling you. Oh God, it's high time you intervene. It's a strategy of La Republic. So I want you to pay attention to the commentary of those who are speaking behind the scene in this video. I'm sorry my, my video have, have been displaced. I want you to pay attention for the commentary of the students and the observers who recorded this video in 2016. They clearly know what they were protesting about and you could hear it from their, their commentary. I also want to acknowledge, I can see Gabi Shina is online and uh, Ephraim Lo, they're online. So listen to the commentary of this video. This was a student protesting during the period of uh, 2016. You take a look at the agent of assimilation. Agent of assimilation. I'm telling you, oh God, it's the high time you intervene. This is Sergio La Republic. It's high time you intervene. Sergio La Republic. Oh God, the route is full. They are here to assimilate us. The route is the full. The Republic are using the route is full. They are here to assimilate us. Oh God. Kill our children every day, hiding it. They are exposed in the town. Yes. Yes, this morning time, they just do that duty. That the, the Povia Povia just assigned them, the assignment. They performed the assignment. Yes. As agent of assimilation, the United Nations, we need our freedom. There is a freedom. We need our freedom. So as early as 2016, the students were quite aware of what our territory as Ambazonia or what you call what they call Anglophones or whatever were going through. They were being assimilated. The Cameroon military was being seen as, a, as agents of assimilation. The military was seen also as a foreign military because only a foreign government can assimilate you. And they knew that they were acting from orders from the President of La Republic to Cameroon. It's very crucial that you have this picture in your mind so that you know exactly what has transpired up to. Agent of assimilation, sweet talking. They will talk all type of politics. They love politics. People are dying every day, every day. I, I believe this picture, this visual will bring end of this situation. Yes. 
Yes, cast all of it away. This, 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 this picture like this will prove that we are we hate, they, they are hating us. The people are hurt. The people are hurt. The people are hurt. They are hurting us. Let them go away. You can hear from the commentary from a young man recording this video, talking about the historic nature of this video, talking about people who have been killed and their, their, their bodies have been hidden away and the deaths were not even known calling on this Cameroon military, the gendarmes, the law enforcement of Cameroon as agents and instrument of assimilation. So it's very uh, important. Push the wall. And you can see the brutal reaction of the Cameroon military against students in students' quarter, beating many students, going from house to house, torturing our people, carrying them in trucks. A lot of students died. A lot of students, both in the the, the province in the, the Atlantic state, in the Savannah, and now is, these video footages were recorded in a CPC Bali, where the La Republic to Cameroon military came in in that campus, arrest all students, put them on the ground, go into the town, arrest close to 800 civilians, randomly gathered all of them and put them here. I want you to watch this video and pay attention to what the Cameroon military man is saying while recording this video that humiliates our people. Everybody will sleep like those guys, very soon. Look at this phone. Regardez le téléphone, c'est là. J'ai dit de regarder le téléphone, c'est là. Regardez le téléphone, c'est là. Regardez le téléphone, c'est là. Regardez le téléphone, c'est là. Tout le monde, tout le monde, regardez le téléphone. Oh, regardez le téléphone, c'est là. Tout le monde va dormir tout à l'heure, là. Comme les hommes, là. Tout le monde. So you can imagine the terror in the heart of these students. Cameroon military men, as you can see with their uniforms, the B. Bataillon Intervention Rapide from the Camero military Camerounaise. Interrogating torturing, humiliating, and terrorizing young students who are in boarding school. These are boarding school students. And besides them, there are also Ambazonian civilians that were rounded up over 800 in this instance. You are going to see in this video, watch the talk of the Cameroon military. What Cameroon is doing to Ambazonian students. Imagine military men carrying guns, terrorizing students who have committed no crime. The anger from these military men against our people and this other group are civilians now. As you can see them, these are the 800 Amazonians who were rounded up in Bali for nothing. Because the doctors were asking for something that captures their aspiration. Look at this bastard. I said, close the eyes. Close the eyes. I said, idiot. Close the eyes. I said, close the eyes. Hear how he's hurting him. Just for opening your eyes. Imagine 100 people rounded up by a professional military. Sleep, 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 sleep. Moga, Moga, get transferred. So, this is the conduct of the Cameroon military in reaction to a peaceful demonstration demanding simple things such as federation, two-state federation, or outright independence as the only solution against the people who are marginalized, people who have been discriminated, people who have been stripped bare from their own nationalism. And this was the reaction. Following this reaction, you also have political parties like the Nijon Fundi, and this is very crucial that our people should understand because looking from hindsight, there is a lot of things you can learn from what is going on. Nijon Fundi, from the last presentation I did, you saw how Nijon Fundi, when the, the, the population was alerted by our representative of the civil society who were in negotiation and dialogue with La Republic in upstation Bamenda, and everybody was, they were burning towns in Bamenda, burning the, the Cameroon military facilities, and the whole town was rising up 
because we heard we were notified that our civil society leaders, Tassang Wilfred, uh, and all of the rest who, Harmony Bokba, who, who were in negotiation with La Republic, they had refused that they cannot go back home. They were holding them to take bribes and to compromise the, the, their, their stance and to divide and not to negotiate as one people from one territory or people reflecting what they call Anglophones. Because of that pressure, Fundi went there, as you saw the last video, and what did Fundi, Fundi did? He came out to deceive the population and tell them that nothing was happening, everything was good. And you had the other person who came there as well, who is Muna Ben Muna. He said it clearly that the people have the right to fight. The youth should fight. So you can see two different angles of people presenting the same problem. But we are very sure about what was the demand of the lawyers and the teachers because it was very clear from their placards and their articulation and the letters that they have written out and those that they have sent to Cameroon as a state. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you to Fundi. When Fundi came in with the SDF to participate and to help the population, which is what every political party is supposed to do, or the so-called elites are supposed to do. They are supposed to be able to speak on behalf of the population, to address the media, address the international community about what is going on. Ni John Fundi who present himself as a political leader of the opposition party and his SDF. They came into the mix and thanks to CRTV, uh, courtesy to CRTV, watch this video and you see what Nijon Fundi came there to present to the people, ma making sure that you know the fact of what was happening. The common law lawyers in the southwest region. Take it, Julius, is a man on that beat. It was a tumultuous day in Boya as SDF senators, members of the National Assembly, and all mayors went through the streets of Boya before converging on the explanade of the Moliko Stadium with the National Chairman Ni John Frundi to publicly make a statement on grievances presented to the government by common law lawyers and teachers. Chairman John Frundi just like the vice president of the national assembly honorable joseph bandam and others made it clear that the government must promote dialogue peace and justice in cameroon by fully respecting and implementing the 1996 constitution which protects the by jura by cultural and nature of cameroon so i want you to pay attention the people were protesting and demanding for what Two state federation or independence for Ambazonia, outright separation. Now, at this stage, the Cameroon government had forbidden and banned all public protests in Ambazonia. But somehow they allowed Frundi and the SDF parliamentarians to come and carry out this protest, which they started in Boya, in Bamenda, and then now they took it to, Bamenda, to, to Boya. And listen to what they were advocating for. Very different from what the people are saying and also very different from what the SDF and Frundi is claiming it is the political proposition of the SDF as a solution for all the problems that have been solved. Remember that Nijon Frundi, in all his interview, he says that the SDF is standing for federation, whether it is 10 state federation or, or whatever. But that is not what he was campaigning on the street because he's a double agent representing the interests of Cameroon. That is why he was allowed to have a public demonstration even when demonstrations were banned because he represents the Republic to Cameroon. And it is crucial that you know this fact because coming March, these same people who disguise and mask themselves as politicians or opposition party will be coming and will be hired to come to our people through media or even in person in armored cars to deceive them that they have their interests at heart. Fundi, despite the demand of the lawyers, despite the demands of the teachers, despite the demands of the students, even when they carry it on placard in front of him, did not come to preach and demand the federation he claims the SDF stands for, but he came to speak the mind of Mr. Paul Beer. Listen to this report, courtesy of CRTV, once more. Protecting and implementing the 1996 Constitution, which protects the by them and others made it clear that the government must promote dialogue, peace and justice in Cameroon by fully respecting 
and implementing the 1996 constitution which protects the Baijura by culture and nature of Cameroon. So the 1996 constitution that Frundi and Bandam were actually pushing was what Pobia is pushing, which is decentralization. Something that the SDF officially is against, but that is what Frundi and Bandam were pushing. This is to tell you that these are mouthpiece of La Republic du Cameroon, and the handshake between Pobia and Frundi should tell the Ambazonian people who Frundi is. He speaks for Pobia, he acts for Pobia, his party have become an extension of Pobia's hand. Their rule as so-called opposition parties are just a charade. Behind them, they are rotten politicians that have received money and sell their conscience to speak for the butchers of our people. Let's continue with this uh, video. Chairman John Frungi said there is absolutely no way that the Anglo-Saxon system of education can be adulterated under the platter of national integration. We want the government to listen to the teachers and listen to the lawyers and do what they want them to do. Because they are not just talking out of the air, they are talking out of tested and proven methods of teaching, tested and proven methods of practicing the law. As the virus. So, Frundi, who is claiming to say that the Cameroon government should listen to the teachers and lawyers because they are speaking from experience and should do what they want them to do. What did the teachers and the lawyers want the Cameroon government to do? Is to agree for a two-state federation or an outright independence for Ambazonia. But what Fundi was proposing, was preaching to the people, was about the 1996 constitution that has no federation, no independence for Ambazonia, not even 10-state federation, but decentralization as advocated by Pobia. That should be telling to the Ambazonian people mounted the podium chanting youths and as they have supporters in boy from the podium this is the placards carried by this the ambazonian citizens who were in boya ambazonian must be free so you can see a disconnect between those who claim to be opposition party those who were trying to hijack that platform to come and speak and represent themselves as though they were speaking on behalf of the people ambazonians and everybody who is watching me, John Fundy and all those so-called opposition, they do not speak for the people. They do not even reflect what the people want, or neither do they reflect what the civil society or people with settled mind have thought is what the people want. They are out of touch. They are agents of La Republic and they speak for nobody but Paul Bia himself. These placards and these are all evidence that you can see from yourself and courtesy to CRTV. The evidence is there for everybody to see. Brandish several placards stating that the laws justice, peace, basic freedoms and liberties and stand against police brutality. The public rally wrap up with the SDF party officials, representatives of lawyers and teachers insisting that they shall only resume work when their grievances would have been fully addressed. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to have this in mind and this manipulation and the rule people like Frundi or the so-called opposition parties are playing, representing the interests and the head of state of La Republic to Cameroon, because this is very important as we move forward. After all this thing, you could see that the people could not align themselves with Frundi and the SDF. They were disconnected with them, and eventually the people rose up and demanded for outright independence, as they did. And I want to show you a picture of our people rising up so that you can see clearly the sequence of events that transpire from then the people were not listening to Fundi, but they tend to listen now to advocates and the leadership that have run away from the country activists like myself who were now speaking and try to explain to the world what the people actually were demanding for so these are video footages that subsequently the people decided cut rope and what they were demanding for was Ambazonia. They were asking for outright freedom, outright independence. So you can hear they were talking about Ambazonia rising. They were not talking about the Cameroon flag 
They were not talking about SDF anymore. They had pushed people like Frundi out there, outside, because what they want is very clear to them and to everybody. And the footages will go, this is from the Atlantic State. And now, even in the Savannah State, they were singing one thing, Ambazonia is rising to fall no more. Their, amb their anthem was learn, their history was relearn, and they exerted what they won, which is Ambazonia. Even in Bamenda, in the capital city of Bamenda, not only did all the villages rose up together and all the rear areas, even in the city center, I want to show you in Bamenda city center. So this is in Bamenda, in the Liberty Square, that is Commercial Avenue. The, the people rose up. So you can see the Ambazonian flag was hoisted in the Liberty Square in Bamenda by a young man there by the name um, the Agaba, who ended up to become the ADF of our commander in the whole of the Savannah State. Was So, do not be deceived. It is clear what the people want. The people were not confused about what they want. The lawyers, the common law lawyers, the common law lawyers have championed the cause of the grievances of all the civil society of Ambazonia and have articulated what the people were suffering from and what they wanted, and it was clear, unambiguous. It was two state federation or independence. But people like Frundi and his political party, the SDF, who were pretending that they were opposition party, were actually speaking on behalf of the regime. They were actually speaking as a mouthpiece of Paul Bia. That said, as we celebrate and we remember this anniversary, I don't think we are celebrating it because it's a, it's a painful reminder. As we look back to the 15th of the to the 15th of January, that fateful day where Paul Gogomo declared that the Ambazonian civil society were extremists, that opened the way for La Republic to ban our nationalism and also launch now the beginning of Ambazonia uprising, where people were no longer asking or demanding anything from La Republic, but were asking that La Republic should go, enough is enough. Ambazonia rising coincided with the exact day that a comrade. N.S. Wani was assassinated by La Republic du Cameroon. N.S. Wani, in case you don't know him, I'll, I'll bring his picture up later on, was assassinated on that same day. And uh, on, in 2000, 19, 1972, I want Ambazonian people to learn and understand something. And for those who listen to me, I know you are the most influential people because most of you are militants. And uh, those of you help to shape the opportunity. The, 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 the psychology and opinion of our people. So it's very important that you follow what I'm going to say about La Republic and learn the lessons very, very carefully. NS Wani, that you have been taught in your history and many people in the history of La Republic, even on social media and website, have been presented as the one of the leaders of the UPC party. They have convinced and taught La Republic to come around citizens as NS Wani, was one of the leaders of the UPC party. As a matter of fact, NS Wani was actually a UPC member. But he his, his battle against La Republic had nothing to do with UPC. He did not die. He wasn't arrested because he was UPC. The name of his party that he was killed was the AN, ANLK. That means Lame La Liberation Nationale du Cameroon. That was his military wing and that was what brought him to Cameroon to fight for his country and it's important that you can see how Cameroon deal with opposition and the rule they are playing with what they are trying to do to us right now because NS1 uh, military wing was created when Cameroon had its independence he fought Cameroon for over 10 years after they had independent so-called independence until he was captured in 1970 the Cameroon government wants you to think that he was killed because he was a member of a UPC party. No, he was not a he was a member of the UPC party, but he was not killed 
because of his activity as a UPC militant. He was killed because of his part activity as the ANLK, which was a military wing. NS Wani, who was a member of the UPC, a teacher, ran into Ambazonia, I think in 1956, and was staying in Kumba when the Cameroon government at that time, the colonial government, banned the UPC. He ran and was living in Ambazonia in Kumba. He stayed in Kumba for some years and then moved up to Accra where he now was advocating from the diaspora for the independence of Cameroon. When France hand over Cameroon to those who were collaborators with them, those who were presenting themselves as opposition to them, the Amadou Aijos and the military at that time, the French government pretend that they have given independence, but N.S. Wanyi and many patriots of Cameroon knew that it was a lie, and he came back to Cameroon to fight for independence after Cameroon have been granted independence. That is to show you that Cameroon is not an independent country and people like Ernest Wani knew. That is why he came back and created a military wing that was called L'Armée de Libération Nationale Camerounaise, N-A-N-L-K. And that military wing were now called Makiza. Even though Cameroon is teaching people that it was a UPC, it was not. This military was a military wing. They were now called Makiza and they came in to fight with guerrilla tactics attacking La Republic in Douala, Yaoundé, and they were Bamileke people. Basically, their base was in the Bamileke land, and the French waged a brutal war against them. It's important that I'll come back and show you the connection between these facts. Now, Cameroon has successfully rewritten its history to reflect the narrative of the UPC because it suits them politically and it helps them to continue to, to colonize Cameroon. I'm going to take you to a video this video is done is a, a courtesy to Franz Venkat. It's courtesy to Franz Venkat that talks about Cameroon and NS uh, Wani. This video shows the truth about what actually happened in La Republic. Courtesy to Franz Venkat. A remote village in southwest France. This former French soldier took part in a war that few people, even in France, have heard of. One which has been described as the beginning of France Afrique. The so I want you to pay attention, and this video is courtesy to Franz Venkat, to pay attention to this narrative of what really happened to Cameroon. And you will have a good idea about what is happening to Ambazonia. Because if you don't know what, it, what you are suffering, it is difficult for you to know how you can even fight, fight it in the first place. So this soldier is an eyewitness of the war in Cameroon after their independence. This is not a war in some ancient period where everything was black and white in what we perceive. It was in color. So I want you to take a look about this video because there is a picture that shows the killing of NS Wani. I'll come back to that later on. But watch this video and listen to the testimony of this eyewitness that thanks to Franz Venkat, we have the, a recorded a video of this uh, man's interview. Listen. The relationship between Paris and its former African colonies. Bardet was sent to Cameroon between 1962 and 1964 in the western Bamileke region. So this is an eyewitness. This is his picture. He was seen in 1962 to 1964. That means after Cameroon have half its independence, there was war going on, a struggle for the independence of Cameroon. That war was called by Ernest Wani as the struggle for independence of Cameroon. So the so-called Cameroon that you think is independent, they are freedom fighters who are fighting for its independence because they consider Amadou Aijo as a continuation of the French Republic in Cameroon. Amadou Aijo was a puppet, and that has continued till today with Paul Bia. So I want you people to see this very important documentary that Franz Venkat has put out there because this information are out there, but our people have not had time to view it and consider it through our own activism for our nationalism. So watch this video from this eyewitness testimony who was part of that war. He was a helicopter pilot and witnessed several massacres committed by the Cameroonian army. It was strongly supported and funded by France. So remember what he's saying. The Cameroon army was managed, was supported and was funded by France. A manager is the person who actually is doing what is happening. The founder is the person who is sustaining it. 
by who? By France. Listen. That's a Bell 47 G2, 280 horsepower, a very small helicopter, just three seats. The Cameroonian army, backed by France, targeted members of the UPC, a party that opposed President Amadou Aïdjo. The UPC believed that after independence in 1960, Aïdjo was simply France's hand-picked puppet. For the first time on television, Max Bardet describes the atrocities he saw. Soldiers of the Cameroonian army were ordered to kill the men, but not the women. Women would be left to agonize. Most had been wounded by AK-47 bullets. But not only that, what I want to say is that they would also cut off their breasts and disembowel them. So this is the eyewitness, somebody who participated in that war from France. And he is explaining that the Cameroon soldiers were ordered. It would be interesting for you to know who ordered them. Because we know for sure that the people who were fighting that war were the French. Were the French military. These are the people who were cutting off the heads of Cameroonians in La Republique du Cameroon. These were the people who were giving order to the Cameroon military that was waging this war. And they were fighting for France. So it's very important that you know what is going on and the narrative. Let's listen. During these massacres, Max Bardet was accompanied by a French officer. The officer who was with me was here to be on the lookout and make sure no one would witness what was going on, that no one could ever testify or accuse France and the few members of the French military still present in Cameroon. So the French government had officers that were monitoring and making sure that there is no weakness left, that everything is kept in, in the dark. You have seen France still playing the same role in Ambazonia, making sure that what is happening in Ambazonia remains in the dark. They are very good at having this type of mundus operandi, even in their operations till today in Ambazonia. But pay attention as we go through so that you get what we are driving ahead. Of being involved in what was going on. Bardet says he understands why many Cameroonians remain bitter. If I were them, I would be angry with the French or with France. So this is a military man, French military retired man, who fought this war from 1962 to 1964 for two years fighting, killing Cameroonians, telling the war where the anger of the people of that country should be. It should be in France. Against who? France. Because he, as a Frenchman, was responsible. He committed those atrocities. The French officers were giving orders. The French officers were making sure nothing leaks out that it remained hidden. The crimes they were committing against Cameroonians who were fighting for their independence. Independence after independence. That should tell you something. Let's listen. Yes, really, I would. A new book on this topic called The War in Cameroon has just come out in France. The French carried on with their military activities, albeit discreetly. They would manage or supervise operations rather than... So remember, this is a researcher who published a book, and we, we are watching the, the documentary that was produced by France Vincar, telling you that it was a French war. The French were fighting a war, not Cameroon, because the French were in charge. And the French were hiding their actions, their activity, by putting Cameroon in front. So the Cameroon you see is a front for France. Listen to it again. Cameroon has just come out in France. The French carried on with their military activities, albeit discreetly. So the French were carrying out their military activity according to what the researcher is saying. It is a French military activity. It was not Cameroon. What Cameroon government is doing for the most part, you think it's Cameroon doing it. It's actually a French mission. They are doing the job for France. The people behind the actions are France. From France. French men from France. Listen. They would manage or supervise operations rather than having a massive military presence on the ground. So the French will hide behind, manage from behind, and supervise your supervisor. And you, that is evidence even in the testimony of Emmanuel Macron when he talks about telling Paul Bia to release people from prison, ordering Paul Bia like a kid. That is to tell you that these are the people who manage Cameroon, who supervise Cameroon, 
no doubt they produce Cameroon's currency. It's very important that you make this connection and you know the rule even of people like Paul Bia, who sits there as a president, but actually he's a puppet, just like Amadou Ahijou, operating under the same system that was set up by the French government. Let's continue. This way they could crack down on the UPC nationalists, that's the Union of Cameroonian People, but also on all those suspected of supporting this movement, the so-called subversive elements. So I want you to pay attention, even researchers don't get everything right, because they are focusing about the killing of UPC, but they were not killing UPC because the fighters were, for the most part, ANLK, what they are calling the subversive, the subversive people, that means the population that supports the UP that were members of the UPC, they were the people that supported the movement for independence for Cameroon. But the fighters were actually the ones that they called Makiza was the ANLK. Those were the target, and they had orders to go after people that they consider people who support the movement. Does this sound similar to you? Cameroon military goes to Ambazonia not just to target the Cameroon the Ambazonian fighters that they don't want to call the names. They don't call the name of the ADF and all those groups fighting against them. But they target not just the fighters, but the people that they they, they, they support the, the movement. And in this case, you heard that, that military man saying, they cut the breasts of their women. They allow women to mourn. They allow people to see the body of their children to mourn so that they will be totalized to subject themselves under that regime and surrender. Let's continue. This repression, this crackdown was so discreet, it was like a secret operation. Indeed, back in France, no one was aware of the extent of these military operations. But not only were these operations off the radar, they were also extremely violent. In the 1960s, you had entire villages being destroyed in air raids. People were being forced into camps surrounded with barbed wire. Torture was becoming systematic. So you can hear exactly what is happening today. Villages burned down systematically. Population tortured and put in, in camps like we see in Kondengi and many camps that come around have had private prisons across our territory. Schools transformed into prisons yet where entire population like the video I showed you with over 800 civilians rounded up in Bali. Most of them have disappeared. This is the, this is, this is the mundus operandi of the system you have in Cameroon. What Cameroon is doing is not something new. It is how that system operates. A system set up by Charles de Gaulle, by Franks, supported, funded, and supervised by Franks. And I want you to pay close attention even more so to the conclusion of this documentary. Revelations in this book come after those published in the first edition, and they could have legal and financial consequences for France. The French government is fully aware that the Mao Mao, a group that was violently repressed in Kenya in a similar way and at a similar time, sued the British government a few years ago and won compensations. Lawsuits are still being filed. So I think the French government wouldn't like to find itself in a similar position. So, during this same time when Cameroon, when Cameroon was under attack by the French government and the forces that the French proxy forces, the Cameroon military is a proxy force for France. During that time, even in, in Kenya, you had the Mao Mao who were fighting for independence and the British government were doing the same thing. Right now, the British government have admitted, just like the France government have admitted, with classified history being exposed. The difference is that in Ethiopia, in Kenya, there have been law suits that were filed in against the British government and compensation have been secured. But in Cameroon, there is no law suit because while there is a relative freedom in Kenya and Kenya managing their affairs, the France Afrique, based on a colonial draconian system, still hold the Cameroonians and many of the former uh, French territory by puppet regimes with absolutely no freedom of their own. So these are the things that the French government is worried about. But more importantly, I want you to pay attention to the ramification of this knowledge. The ramification of knowing that the French government is actually behind the Cameroon government. Is the one actually sponsoring the Cameroon government. Managing the Cameroon government. Supervising the Cameroon government. You have seen the Cameroon, the French uh, ambassador, supervising and performing duties that Paul Bia have been performing in graduating senior members of Cameroon military. 
you have seen all those things. Those are not stories to you. You have seen Emmanuel Macron telling the public that he is going to give orders to Paul Bia. These are not stories to you. So watch attentively to the conclusion of the ramification of these things that you know. But they're also worried of the conclusions that could be drawn from their implication in the war in Cameroon. Because beyond the violent repression, it was one of the cornerstones in building a very peculiar system of French governance, not only in Cameroon, but in all of France's former colonies in Africa. So, this brutal killing, maining, torture of the entire population using the Cameroon military was the cornerstone in building a draconian, peculiar French system called the France-Afrique that will have been set up that continue to survive generation to generation till today in Togo, in uh, Ivory Coast to a lesser extent, in Cameroon, in Gabon, where these dictators put in place by France to control and manage the activities of the French government managed by the French government on behalf of the French government. This is a system that has been put in place. Their money itself, you know, money, legal tender is very essential in terms of authority and who is in control, who determines value, who determines foreign policy, foreign education. These systems are still in place in all the French, former French colony, and Cameroon is the anchor of this system. I want you to hear again the ramification as stated by this uh, gentleman, a researcher from France. A peculiar system of drawn from their implication in the won compensations. Lawsuits are still being filed. So I think the French government wouldn't like to find itself in a similar position. But they're also worried of the conclusions that could be drawn from their implication in the war in Cameroon. Because beyond the violent repression, it was one of the cornerstones in building a very peculiar system of French governance, not only in Cameroon, but in all of France's former colonies in Africa. So yes, if people start taking a closer look at what happened during this war, this is something deeply worrying for the French government. And this regardless of whether the government is on the left or on the right. So that is the clock of the matter, as you have heard this uh, researcher saying. The French government is very worried that a closer look if we take a closer look into these activities of the French government, we are going to uncover the system, the peculiar system that the French government have put in place across Africa in all the French colony, including Cameroon. A system of brutal dictatorship and an oligarchy that the French government managed from behind, the French government supervised from behind, the French government supports fully from behind to exploit Africa for France and let these puppet dictators benefit with their own kingsmen, usually their own tribesmen. That is exactly what we face. And a similar thing to connect the dot with what is happening in Ambazonia, I want to show you the pictures that have been circulated in uh, the execution of uh, NS Wani in, uh, in La Republic du Cameroon. This picture is one of the most famous pictures that is, that is found in many Cameroon textbooks. The picture up with black and white was a stage picture where NS Wani was assassinated, was killed in a so-called execution after his kidnapping in uh, nine, his arrest in uh, 1970. And he was executed one year after he was condemned to death by the Cameroon uh, Tribunal, the so-called Cameroon Tribunal on behalf of France. After he was executed, this is the picture that has been put in Cameroon textbook. As you see up there, that picture is a fake. If you look down there here, you will see when the picture was being staged. You look at the man with the dress there. It's the same dress, the same cap over there taking that picture. Cameroon disguised such activity. In Ambazonia war against Cameroon, we see the same intelligence war. Each time Cameroon carry out an atrocity, they go to other African countries where similar atrocities have taken place and push those fake images and fake news side by side to go parallel with reality so that people are confused on what to share and when you go and you share false information or wrong information then intelligence in the, around the world will know that you are first of all not current with what is happening 
So this deception is still going on. Today in the war in Ambazonia where the French government is sponsoring, supervising and aiding the Cameroon government to carry out genocide, they are still using the same tactics of deception and false picture. There are other pictures of NS Wanyi's uh, execution. This one also is also not the picture of NS Wanyi because you can look from his dressing. He had black and black when he was executed and according to witness testimony, NS Wanyi was executed by a French soldier, not even a Cameroonian black, using his revolver, according to witness testimony. But pictures like this are being shared in Cameroon textbook to deceive their people, to think that their people were killed by their own. by their own, And it's a humiliation that we, we hope that Africa one day will know their true story. I'm going to show you a little bit video of uh, NS Wanyi as well, so that you can see the man. Then I'll, since he's, uh, he's, he's a very important comrade as well, I'll take you back later on to, uh, you can see his dresses as he was when he was uh, picked up. So this is him with this is famous black on black dressing until he was executed. He was dressed like this in Bafosam throughout his try, black and black. And there is no picture of his execution. Any picture you see about his execution are just fake news to manipulate public opinion and to disorient pop public uh, the public to know exactly what happened with this true uh, African, a Cameroonian who is a patriot. And I want you people to know this why. For you to understand that the Cameroon government that you see today, the people that are running the Cameroon government, are the people who fought against the independence of Cameroon. Amadou Aijo, who was succeed, the succeeding uh, government structures in Cameroon, are put in place by France to manage their their plantation in Africa called Cameroon. It's important that you know. The Cameroon government is a puppet government put in place by a French system that have disguised the so-called democracy there and the Cameroon freedom fighters such as Enya Wanyi knew it right from the start. That is when, when they considered Cameroon was an independent country, he was seen in the bush fighting for freedom and for independence under his movement. Remember, his movement was A N. LK. Now, I want you to show you this very important part that we are going through this phase of pre-talks and maybe I'm sure there will be negotiation to know what was negotiation by this system in the case of the leader of the, the, the rebel move, the, the independent movement in La Republic called the Armée de Libération Nationale Camerounaise. This movement, when they told them that they were supposed to have negotiation, that is how they use. That is how they kidnap. Uh, they arrested NS Wani, and the same thing is going on in Ambazonia. We must be aware of these tricks of the enemy. The reason I want to show you is to understand what happened and the rule the church played during this uh, during this period. So be very careful to listen and watch what happened. NS Wani was deceived, and Ambazonians were used to fight him. People, the Ambazonian soldiers, Jongu Foncha, were involved. They were hired and sent in military to go and convince them in a so-called DDRS type of center was going on there too. They also had the DDR center. So the same playbook that Cameroon used to fight the independence movement in Cameroon, they are using it to fight the independence movement in Ambazonia. So watch this documentary and uh, you, you have an idea of how NS Mwanyi was actually uh, captured. Gentlemen, it looks like I did not transfer <laughs> this particular video to my computer. So pardon me to do just that right now. I think the video is ready. And I will transfer it there. And share it with you. This is a very important uh, video that you need to see so that I can then Oops, what is that video? I can then connect the dots. Okay.
Oops. Oh, yeah, yeah. I found it here. And uh, be patient. Good things don't come easy. For those who are watching me. Okay, I can't get that particular video now. I'll load it and I'll share it later on to show the testimony of uh, what happened and how NS Mwani was uh, finally arrested. What happened was that there was a negotiation. Uh, there was a Catholic church that was used. The Catholic church was used. And he was convinced that he can uh, have a negotiation with Mr. Madu Ejiju. They convinced him to have a, a negotiation with Madu Ejiju. A vehicle was sent to pick up some soldiers that were convinced to go to the so-called DDR center in La Republic during that period of time. And that vehicle was, was allowed to circulate. Few people were taken and they gave them chance. And uh, that is how he was deceived and put in a vehicle. The military people, the Cameroon military intelligence, they picked him up. They put him, they, they, he, was, he was thinking they were taking him across the border to Nigeria. But instead they arrested him. They told him he will have a face-to-face -face negotiation with Frank with uh, Amadou Ejo. He ends up in a, in a military tribunal where he was convicted in four, on false charges and was executed in uh, 1972, 71. May his soul rest in peace. And uh, this should give be a lesson for us to understand what is going on, the mundus operandis and the dangers. If you do not learn the history, it is impossible for you to know the future. And for those who are La Republic du Cameroon citizens, you should know very well that the successive government that are running your country from Amadou Aiju to Paul Bia are regimes that have been sponsored, managed, and supervised from France. They have no power of their own. Of course, they have some flexibility because they are so-called independent. But as, as a matter of fact, the whole France are free, as you have heard from their own researchers, are a bunch of puppets working on behalf of France to exploit Africans. And Ambazonia, we are down the food chain in this issue and they will continue to use the same policies to fight us. So for us to fight them back, we have to know that they will continue to butcher us until we are able to fight them and resist until we have complete independence. And anything like negotiation, we should, be, we should move very carefully and see what they are trying to do. We saw how they deal with Abobala. He was picked up and now we are in a phase of real negotiation. Can we really trust these people? Are the French government in support of whatever thing is going on? Of course, we know that they are involved in one way or the other. That gives us a little bit indication of what can be happening. Maybe, maybe, we say maybe because we have to be very, very cautious. But we have to learn the mundus operandis. Elections of La Republic in Ambazonia to impose in Ambazonia will be coming out in March. I want you people to know the rule that Fundi and people like the SDF are playing. Even though they pretend that they are an opposition party and they have a, a manifesto that preach 10 state federation, but you have heard from your own with your own ears that they are not representing their political platform. They are speaking on behalf of Pobia and La Republic, a regime which is a puppet colon new colonialist regime that is in charge of running that country. So be wise, be smart, keep your eyes open and be critical in your thinking to make sure that what we want, what we really intend to, we can win. And trust me, we can win this war. We can win this resistance. Our soldiers are brave. We can make sure that they can never govern us like the policy of Dr. Cho and the vision of Dr. Cho to make the land ungovernable for them. Refuse them that power to, to, uh, to exploit our territory. And what I had, uh, had researched in terms of Africans or black people being able to defeat such regimes have been the Haiti solution, which means that take away that which the colonialist wants, which is a plantation, burns all of them down until you have your freedom. After all, you will never benefit from anything that has been exploited by the governments. You will never, unless the government is you, is we, the people, unless the government reflects our own interests, unless we have a democratic power to actually elect leaders, not the fake democracy that they have with fake elections that have no power sharing formula in the, in the way they conduct business and we should be wise. 
if the type of independence we want is the type that La Republic to Cameroon want, the people that are working on behalf of Cameroon will be the one that they will install as the leaders. People who are going to be speaking for Cameroon, fighting on behalf of Cameroon, like Amadou Ayiju was were, were doing with the Semenge and all the military forces. So why the Cameroons, the UPC fought very hard, advocated internationally, internationalized the plight of the Cameroonians to have an independent country. The French government could not fight them because they were right. They were fighting on established international rule and they were right. So instead of the French government giving the independence to Um Yobe and those who were fighting for independence, instead, they brought pulpit that were under their pay rule like Amadou Ijo, people who did not understand their left from right to install them and grant a fake independence for them to continue the exploiting their people. Ambazonia should be very careful that as we have internationalized our struggle and we are at the verge of recognition and independence, be mindful of those who present themselves as the people who are fighting for your independence. Those can actually be the ones who are actually fighting to kill your real independence fighters. And when they will catch people like the NS Wani of Ambazonia, the General A Fangs like General Ivo, the people who were chanting that kill him, kill General Ivo, he was fake. The people that are chanting that the ADF are wrong, the Ayabachos are wrong, the Capodanese are wrong. They are all millionaires today. People six years ago who could not afford a decent car, people who could not afford luxurious life today have become millionaires. Why they were not millionaires before the struggle started? <laughs> May, perhaps. But who am I to know? I'm only Mr. No Connie to open your eyes, to do the investigation for you and do my service to my country to properly inform you with important fact-based analysis. And then if you hear I, I don't, I'm not there to please anybody or any camp, but I'm there to tell you the truth so that you can be empowered because they say knowledge is indeed power. And only the truth, only the truth can set you free. And only the truth I will bring to you. God bless you all. Ciao.